Hello and welcome to part 10 of the Arduino BMS setup. So in this part I want to talk a bit about what I've done to the code recently and the button setup here as well as the future plans for this project and some things that need to happen. So I'll go ahead and boot this up so you can see what I've done. We are currently on version 0.6 of the code as you'll see there. All right, so the way that it boots up, just the same as it was last time, if I turn on the power, eventually the uh, cell voltages will come up and it'll start to balance and it'll do the exact same thing that it did before. But I have added these buttons here. Now a while ago I did a video on these buttons and I'll go ahead and put that up as a card over here. But what I've done with these buttons is I have three wires coming out as you can see. All it is is power ground and one signal wire. So I'm using an analog pin, one single analog pin to read four buttons. And I'll, like I said, you can go ahead and watch the other video if you wanna see how that works. But anyway, this thing works just the same as it did before. You see we've got uh, one of the cells is starting to get to above 4.2 volts there and it's balance circuit is kicking on. But if I click this far right button, it will switch into a different screen. So we've got pack voltage and pack current. So currently our entire pack voltage is 12.51 and we have 2.5 amps going into the pack. And if I hit this button again, it'll switch back. Now obviously that's not too interesting and these other buttons aren't being utilized whatsoever. But this has essentially laid the groundwork for being able to use these buttons and have some kind of user interface for this thing besides just looking at what the cell voltages are and what the current is. Because that's not the most useful thing. If we want to have a programmable BMS, we're going to have to have some kind of user interface. And we have to have some kind of way to interface with the system here, and that's going to be these four buttons. All right, so another thing that I want to announce with this is I have proven that 0.5 has is at least a somewhat working firmware and version 0.5 of the firmware is now available on github and when this video gets released or by the time this video gets released version 0.6 which is what's on it now is going to be available on github as well so i'm going to start putting that github link in the description to these uh, lithium battery pack videos and if you wanna mess with the code, you wanna see how it works, you wanna maybe try to make improvements to it because I'm not the best programmer by any stretch of the imagination, you are welcome to go look at that code on GitHub and modify it, do whatever you want with it. Let me know if you think there's problems with it or you know anything like that. So anyway, I figured I'd just go ahead and announce that and let you know that the code is now available on GitHub. All right, so I figured I'd go ahead and show the modifications that it took in order to make those buttons do something and to add multiple display modes to this thing. So first off, down here I had to add an integer for LCD state and an integer for the button state. You'll kind of see how those are used in a minute. All right, so this is part of the code here. So if button state equals one, that is the rightmost button if that gets pressed. We set the button state back to zero, which means nothing has been pressed and then we increment the LCD state up by one, and we check to see if the LCD state is greater than two, and if it is greater than two, we set it back to one. So that pretty much just limits the value that LCD state can be to either one or two. Then we have if LCD state is equal to one, we clear off the LCD and we do the normal writing procedure that I've done before in the past. But if the LCD state is equal to two, we do a different writing procedure to it, which shows the pack voltage, which is just cell one average voltage plus cell two average voltage plus cell three average voltage. All those added together, of course, equals the pack voltage, and then we print average amps, just like we were doing before. Now also, before, what I was doing was making the semicolon inverted if one of the uh, cells was balancing, so I had to make that an if statement as well. So if LCD state equals one, then we can set the cursor to the appropriate spot and write byte zero, which is the inverted semicolon. I just realized, I really have no idea what I'm doing with uh, English, do I? It's not a semicolon, it's just a colon, straight up colon. I don't know why I did that, or why I was thinking semicolon. But anyhow, moving down here, same thing. If LCD state equals one, we set the cursor in the right spot and we make that inverted colon. 
Now this had to be implemented a little bit differently as well. So we have if flag equals one. So that's if the flag has been set equal to one and in order to get the flag set to one, what has to happen is one of the cell voltages has to go over a certain amount. Now what I did before was just add a 3000 millisecond delay and I left that. If you want buttons to be responsive, you can't really use a, a delay whatsoever. It has to be, you know, it has to continuously read the buttons and be able to respond to them. So what I've done is made a for loop here that goes up to 3000 and of course just the standard like I++ every time it goes around it counts up by one and once it goes over 3000 it will get out of the uh, for loop but essentially all it's doing is reading the switch state and if the switch state is not equal to zero which would mean that one of the buttons has gotten pressed it sets I to 5000 and if you set I to 5000 obviously that's over 3000 and it sends it out of the for loop. So what this is doing is creating a software interrupt. Now there may be better ways of doing this, but I have no idea how or if you even can do a hardware interrupt on an analog pin, especially if you're jumping between two analog values and not just a uh, digital one or a zero. So this is the way that I decided to do it. Works pretty well. I think I've got all the bugs uh, taken out of this setup for now, at least I'll probably find more. And then after that we have a delay of one millisecond, and of course the, way, the reason why it's one millisecond is because this is going to go around 3,000 times. If you have a delay of one millisecond every time it goes around, then you have essentially a three second delay, which is the same as it was before. Of course, it's gonna be, in reality, it's gonna be longer than three seconds because it takes a little bit to read the switches and it takes a bit to do the uh, if statements and all that stuff. So this part is the same as it was before. So once that delay expires, it will turn all the cell balancing off and it'll set the flag back to zero so the system can measure the voltage again. And this is all the same as it was before. And this is void read switch. So. This is essentially the exact same code that I used in the previous video. If you wanna know how this works, it's explained in that video. So that gives you an idea as to how the switches get read while it's in that delayed state. The switches are also being read while it's measuring the voltage. So the switches are also getting read as it's measuring voltages. So you see you've got read switch right there. Now, I don't really care about interrupting this for loop. I don't wanna do that especially because it only takes about 250 milliseconds to execute or something along those lines. Maybe it's only 100 milliseconds. It updates quite a bit. So I wasn't concerned about interrupting this part of the loop for any particular reason because it's fast enough. All right, so I believe that is all of the changes that I had to make to the code. As I said, it is available on GitHub now. The link will be in the description. And I hope you enjoyed that little update on the lithium ion BMS project. And I will see you in the next video, guys. Bye.